everybody. My name is Professor Howell. I want to welcome you to our Precision Manufacturing Lab here at Nashua Community College. Today we're going to talk about edge finding. So here in my hand I have an edge finder. It's a ground precision tool. It has a 3 8 inch diameter shank and you'll notice that this tip can move around. It's actually held by a spring internally. You don't see that. And the tip that goes against the part is accurately ground to two hundred thousandths of an inch. And so that makes our math pretty easy as we'll see shortly. So behind me you see an edge finder already in the machine. It's in a collet which I prefer. You can use a chuck but I prefer the accuracy of a collet. And we're going to pick up the back edge of our vise, the solid jaw, and also this left hand edge of our part. More often than not our dimensions come from the top left hand corner of our part. Always, you're going to nearly always um, indicate or edge find the back of the jaw, the solid jaw, not the movable jaw, but the solid jaw, and more often than not the left hand side of the part. So our edge finder is supposed to go somewhere between 600 RPM to up to about 1000 RPM in order to work properly and ensure that we get an accurate reading. I'm going to turn our spindle on. It's rotating clockwise and we already have our speed set at about 800 RPM. I'm going to lock the quill here and let's pick up this back jaw of our vise. Now you'll notice as I get close I slow down and notice our edge finder starts to go more and more concentric. It lines up. I'm going to tap gently. I'm moving slowly and as I approach that solid jar, our edge finder will make contact and it will move slightly to the left. Patience are important here. If we rush this too fast or go too quickly, we might get an inaccurate reading. So it has shifted to the side. I'm going to shut the machine down. I'm going to hit the brake and I'm going to, uh, actually I'm going to zero my Y axis here. And sometimes, as you're gaining experience, it's kind of nice to go in and check it the second time as we learn these skills. Normally, for students, it's that patience factor. And again, I'm tapping in. I'm just going to see how we did. And I happen to get the same reading two times in a row. All right, now I'll bring the spindle up, and I will set uh, my read out here. I'm going to move a hundred thousandths of an inch and I'm moving towards the solid jaw. I want my edge finder center of my tool to be right over the edge of that vice jaw. So I've done that. I'm set to zero here. Now let's go pick up the x-axis on this side of the part. This machined surface will serve us well and we'll edge find there. So as additional features of your part need to be put in, edge finding gives us a way to pick up the edge of the part very accurately and then our features will be located in the appropriate places on our print. All right, so our edge finder is broken to the side. I'm going to hit my zero here. One more time, we'll just double check and see how we did. This time I'm looking at my readout a little bit to get myself close. And there we go. And I did get the same reading again. Very important that we account for half that edge finder. I'm going to move in the correct direction. And you can always look and identify that you are going in the right direction. Here we are at 100 thousandths. Now I have edge found my part. Sometimes it's nice to be sure that we've done it correctly. I'm going to go to zero, zero on my readout and you will see that our edge finder, the center of the edge finder, really the center of the spindle of the machine is indeed lined up with the corner of the part. Now we could proceed with putting in holes or other features in our part. And that's how we do some edge finding. If you need help, talk to your professor or your lab assistant. Thanks for watching.